Dhruv, a student reporter with Invention Convention Worldwide. I'm excited to introduce my three guests, Sasha, Adam, and Anthony, college students from Michigan. Last year, this group placed third within 12th grade and won the Aerospace Award at Invention Convention U.S. Nationals for their invention, Firefly, Wildfire, Drone, Sentinel. Welcome, Sasha, Adam, and Anthony. Hello. Hi. Hello, hello. So, uh, could you guys tell us a little bit about your group's invention? Our invention is a wildfire drone sentinel. So basically its job is it's, we have a slogan called DIA. The first thing it does is it detects temperature abnormalities in um, an environment like a wildfire or sorry, a forest. And then it'll inform the authorities of these temperature abnormalities and fluctuations. And then it'll assist in um, combating the wildfires through sending out drones like multiple drones, like a swarm of bees, and it'll attack that area until the wildfire kind of um, tones down. So it'll help mitigate the area until authorities arrive. So what inspired you to come up with this drone idea? So it's really like a, a culmination of a bunch of different uh, disciplines that we're all experienced with. So I had a lot of experience with that aerospace and drones, especially like I'd built a drone in the past. I have a lot of friends who are very big uh, in drones and are like sort of setting up their own company or whatever. Uh, and then um, we also wanted to implement a lot of uh, computer coding things, which is what Anthony's really good at. And then Sasha's really good at like the research and then sort of tying the whole project and the presentation together. And so we wanted to tackle a big issue. So we chose uh, wildfires for that, which have been a very major issue in the past few years, as I'm sure you're aware. One thing that also drawn me to working on this project is um, a couple of years ago in high school, I was working for a key club or as well volunteering for a key club and uh, for the Australian wildfires. And I noticed that there is a huge issue just like of wildfires around the world, whether in Australia, there's in Mexico, California. And I was like, this would be great if we can combat this issue. So kind of tying in like this is a global issue and we need to solve it and then kind of you know, working together so that we can all contribute into this problem and work together and, you know, use our skills to create a project that would have a meaningful impact. Um, Adam, uh, you spoke a little bit about like drones and how you use like your background in aerospace. Uh, could you describe some of the prototypes that you guys had and what changes did you make throughout the invention process? Yeah, sure. So like the uh, initial thing that we had um, was just basically a mock-up of the structure of what pretty much the center of one of our drones would look like. So it'd be fixed wing, meaning that it has wings and it's a blended wing type. So it's just all one big wing essentially is what we have. Uh, and then in our first iteration, we had like our sort of center body main piece of that. And in that we included like a couple light sensors to demonstrate like the basic capabilities that the drone would have. So from there, uh, we also designed like a basic CAD prototype illustration of what the finished drone would look like. And then from there, we took it a step further and then we added in a lot more features. So we had a computer vision system which could detect different colors to simulate an infrared camera uh, that would be used on the actual thing. Uh, we had like a water pump that we uh, rigged up that would like spray water from a cup that we could dip like a little nozzle into and then it would spray out to demonstrate like the fire retardant um, capabilities. We had uh, like a more robust structure essentially so that way we could tie everything together. Uh, and then last, the last thing that we did um, was we essentially made a airframe model, um, like an actual proper CAD design of what a working airframe would look like. Uh, so we used a program called uh, OpenVSP for that, which is a open source software for airframe design that was originally put out by NASA and then further developed by different people. So I used um, a lot of my experience from a glider academy that I was at over the summer, which is like flying airplanes with no engines. Um, and then took like the lessons I learned from that, thinking about how the air affects an aircraft in certain ways and how to design a sort of airframe using that knowledge into a more practical application. Very cool. Uh, Anthony, so with those designs, there has to be some sort of programming challenges involved. Uh, could you talk a little bit more about that and like what sort of setbacks you experienced? Sure. So um, when I initially got into the project, I 
had some substantial knowledge about programming, but I never applied it towards the uh, field of um, aerospace and like things that fly because standard programming like computer science isn't really applied for that. Um, so it was kind of a challenge to kind of uh, get what like Adam and like Sasha would explain to me sometimes about how this piece must be like this way because it would make the drone fly better. Um, I had to work around that. And so what I did most of the time was I would essentially ask like, okay, how um, would a prototype need to accomplish this task in a way that I could program or carry out feasibly um, with like my knowledge that I had. So for example, um, I think one thing I wanted to add on to uh, the second prototype that Adam mentioned was that um, re realistically the drone would have to detect uh, humidity and temperature sensing um, in an area of wildfires in order to actually detect like where the source of the wildfire is, or at least detect the temperature in the air to see which areas are hot, um, therefore indicating a fire. So for that prototype, I used an Arduino um, Uno as well as programming it with an Arduino IED, IDE and some other parts, um, and then basically place that whole circuit inside the prototype to simulate um, the prototype having that capability, even though it's not fully fledged or fully worked out yet. So you guys were able to work pretty cohesively with each other. Um, Sasha, could you go in a little bit about like how you guys partnered up with each other? Have you made any other inventions? How, how did you guys like end up collaborating on this? Yeah, um, I'm glad you brought that up. Actually, Adam Vandermillen and I both worked on a project last year for Invention Convention on drone technology. Um, we kind of created a universal attachment system so we could attach multiple different cameras to one drone and so we kind of ground up working in drones together um every previous year and then um this year we decided to work with anthony and anthony ended up being a perfect fit because he was he's amazing in programming and i could like because we all can we um adam has a strong background in drones and anthony has a strong background in um programming i came up with this idea to like kind of create this wildfire wildfire drone project um, where we were able to work up so cohesively um, because we each, you know, had this skill and all were passionate about this project. It's great that you guys were able to pair your strengths so well. Um, so you mentioned that you uh, were at Invention Convention uh, Nationals last year. Um, so Adam, like, what was your experience at Invention Convention U.S. Nationals throughout the last two years? Uh, yeah, so um, it's been pretty great. Um, last year was a little bit different um, because the entire competition was online and not in person at all. So uh, we had like the state round, well, like the local round, state round, national round, all of those were online. So um, that made it very difficult for us to collaborate with each other because we couldn't like go and meet up in person at like the school or something where we have all these tools and such that are fancy and high tech to make our prototype. So I basically, what I did to make the like physical prototype was literally took like a hammer and a chisel and then like carved it out of a wooden block and then like sawed out pieces, made like a composite out of like plastic and cardboard or whatever. And that actually paid off because the award that we got was from Black & Decker for like how we use tools and stuff for making the project. So it ended up being kind of a blessing in disguise that it was online and we couldn't really like meet up in person at the school where he had all of our fancy equipment um and then this year uh it was like we were at school we had been going for like the whole first semester of the school year on various other projects we were well prepared rolling ready to rumble so we get together we've got all of our equipment and then we just put in all of our effort put our best foot forward every time you know we were working hard when other people in the class were like kind of just hanging out we were still going, working on our project, taking it further, going the extra mile on it. And that was what really paid off there. Yeah. And you can see in the awards that you guys won. I mean, congrats. That's incredible. Um, yeah, thank you. On that note, um, Anthony, um, would you be able to like, so um, is there anyone like you would like to thank for their support in this invention convention? I can't really think of too many people specifically. Um, but one, I guess one person that does like really come out to me is probably my father since he was 
Um, he is an engineer um, as his job. So he gave me the inspiration to like kind of like study technology. Um, I didn't know what technology at a young age, but to study it um, anyways. And yeah, he said like, uh, he's really proud that I made it this far, like invention convention that I was able to use the skills that I learned on my own um, because I didn't learn programming through high school um, through some other, some different like reasons. But yeah, I used my own skills to like help out um, a meaningful project and he was proud. So I guess that makes him a very good inspiration, very big inspiration for me. That's really sweet. And <laughs> he's going to like hearing that. <laughs> Um, Sasha, what about you? Um, I think I'd like to, first of all, thank Raytheon Technologies for hosting this event. I think it's incredible that they're giving, um, you know, young inventors this opportunity to, you know, showcase their talent and, you know, create new things and inventions. And then I think I'd also like to thank our teachers, um, you know, Robert Cupid and Miss uh, Veronica Cho. They helped tremendously in our project and helping us get through the process, like the design process and everything. Um, and they're our, our number one supporters in the whole process and everything. So huge thanks to them. Adam, uh, I know you mentioned the Flight Academy, but is there anyone else uh, that you would like to thank? Uh, yeah, at the Flight Academy, just the instructors there, um, particularly Jan was his first name. His last name, I think, was Kulterfeld. Um, but yeah, he was a Swiss uh, aerospace engineer, PhD. Um, so he was very, very knowledgeable uh, in all things aerodynamics. So that's perfect for a glider academy because you're very much at the mercy of the air around you and the environment that you're in. And so the lessons that he taught, he had a very unique approach where he explained like the free body diagram physics approach to how all of it works. And that made it much, much easier to understand the flying. And then taking that into the invention convention, um, it made it much easier to go and design like an actual airframe. Like before the academy, well, I wouldn't have been able to really go and fully design one. But after that, with all of the knowledge gained uh, from that experience, I felt like very much more comfortable going in, understanding what everything meant, and then going ahead and making one and optimizing it. That's amazing, man. Anthony, so like now that all of you guys are in college, how would you say that invention convention has helped you? I guess confidence, um, for example, just like having an experience that's um, semi-professional, semi-fun, and also just kind of like focused on team-based um, and engineering principles as a whole. Um, I guess since we're all engineering, mate, um, we're all engineering students and we're planning to like pursue engineering degrees it's very important for us to like have those types of experiences and invention convention was um honestly like one of the best experiences i had regarding that yeah no i absolutely agree i mean the interview process just really opens you up and then the ability to interact with other students interact with judges who know what you're talking about it, it's just a really fun and uplifting experience um, Adam, uh, what about you? What are your interests in college and how has Invention Convention supported that? Uh, yeah, I mean, Invention Convention's helped out a lot with uh, working towards engineering, um, particularly with like a lot of the project uh, sort of management stuff, like knowing how a project's going to look and like helping out keeping the ball rolling and moving the project forward. Uh, so like we have a, we have to make like a little rover out of a mousetrap for my engineering class right now. And so the other people in my group, uh, we're all working together to like get it done, but we have to do it outside of class time entirely. And it's separate from what we're working on class with like MATLAB and stuff. So we have to really plan out a lot of like, okay, here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do it sort of thing to really keep the ball moving in that regard. And you really get a sense of deadlines um, with invention convention and then now in college. So it's really cool yeah. that you guys are able to use like your innovation in that regard. Um, Sasha, what about you? And could you also talk a little bit about why students should invent and why kids nowadays like need that approach? Yeah, no problem. Um, I think one thing that I really took away from Invention Convention is uh, it, it kind of gave me a lot of leadership, communication and teamwork skills. It, um, it gave me the ability to like really interact with like my teammates and even at the competition, interact with other like like minded fellows who are interested in inventing and engineering in general and kind of it 
it helps you like learn that there's other people around you, like just like you who are interested in inventing. Um, and another thing I took away is to like stay persistent. Like we, there's multiple times where we kind of didn't know what to do with our project because we were at a roadblock and we didn't know how to move forward, but we stay persistent and we were able to get over those roadblocks and, you know, make our project successful. Um, I think I would tell people that this is like a really great opportunity to kind of, you know, to kind of be more creative and, you know, help out your community and, you know, the world in general, like you can express yourself in a way that can help your community. And yeah, you guys were uh, persevering and it absolutely paid off. So that's great. Um, Anthony, uh, what are your future plans? I'm just curious to know, I mean, from your experience from Invention Convention and now you're in college, I mean, what kind of career are you interested in? Honestly, I'm deciding between computer science and computer engineering, but uh, as of recent, I lean more towards computer engineering. Um, and I would say that's probably due to my experience with Invention Convention and how I use a lot more hardware that involved um, programming aspects with it. And after talking to some like upperclassmen here, um, they called out computer engineering because you use programming and hardware together. Um, I'm not super sure uh, what specific job um, or job fields that like opens up, but I do know that it is an interesting field that I want to explore more of. Um, and because it interests me, it's worth considering. I think you're gonna make a great computer engineer. <laughs> Adam, what about you? Uh, so yeah, I'm majoring in uh, mechanical engineering right now and planning to add an aerospace minor sometime in the future. Um, I'm actually uh, in ROTC for the Air Force right now. Um, so nice. I'm planning to go into the Air Force um, or more hopefully the Space Force actually. That's what I want to go for in space operations. Uh, so to sort of combine engineering skills with a very dynamic sort of environment, which I really like working in. Sasha, what about you? I'm planning on majoring in mechanical engineering. So I think this project is really helpful because between like working on like the designs and drawing up those designs and then, you know, working in CAD to like make the actual design come to life and then working with Adam to actually build the whole prototype itself. I think this whole invention process has really been beneficial to like what I, like mechanical engineering, which I want to go into and like, you know, the learning of the design process and everything. Thank you guys all so much for your time. You guys are incredible to host. Um, on behalf of all of us at Invention Convention Worldwide, thank you, Sasha, Adam, and Anthony for joining me. Uh, be sure to check out other student inventors on our YouTube channel. Until next time. Bye. Thank you.